Hey guys and welcome to another WX Python tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the combo box widget. Okay, now the combo box is a pretty cool widget in WX Python. It has a lot of cool functions, a lot of cool styles. Okay, it really makes you want to, you know, work with it. Okay, because the more support and more, you know, interactive functions that a widget has, the better. Okay, the easier it is for you to control it, the easier it is for you to manipulate it and get values from it, get data from it. Okay, and yeah, pretty cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin right away. Oh, and before we begin, so what is a combo box? If you, well, if you haven't heard of this before or haven't ever seen one before, I don't blame you. They aren't too common, okay? Well, they are fairly common, I'd say so, but not too common. So what a combo box is, is basically a drop-down list of options, okay? It's just a simple text field, sort of, and you click on a little drop-down arrow next to it and a whole list of drop-down options appear, okay? So pretty cool. You can select a list of them and yeah, we'll discuss this more as we proceed with the video and make the widget. Okay, so as usual, let's first create the widget and then we'll figure out how to interact with it and then we'll move on to the styles and then the functions, okay, and so on. So here's the widget. Uh, what, what are we going to call it? Let's just call it CB, okay, because I like to abbreviate them that way, you know, combo box CB, okay, WX <clears throat> dot combo box okay parent is self dot panel obviously now be careful it does not have label okay it actually has value okay value as a parameter okay instead of label so I'll just put something like default option in here okay and position okay so yeah pretty much is there anything else we need to do well yes actually I just remembered there's an additional parameter here in the combo box, which I think we did in a previous widget. Yeah, the radio box, the radio box, or the radio group actually is what I meant. We did it in that, okay, which is the choices parameter, if you remember. Now, obviously, you know what this parameter is for, maybe. It's basically, I mentioned that we have a drop-down list of options, right? Or in other words, a drop-down list of choices. So that's basically what this is, okay? It's asking us, what kind of choices do you want to keep in this combo box? So I'm just going to, you know, for uh, readability to sake, I'm going to make this separate area up, up here with the choices. So I'll just do something generic, okay? Like bread, butter, cheese, what else? Biscuits, okay? Some basic items like that. Four is enough, I think. And yeah. So I'll go ahead and pass this array values in here. Okay, we're good. Now let's run this and we should have our basic widget set up. Huh. Okay. That was a bit unexpected. Its size appears to be a bit small. But basically we can see it working here, can't we? Okay. Have you ever seen this before? I'm pretty sure you guys have. So yeah, pretty cool, right? And this is the base implementation. So now we're going to take a look at other stuff. The first thing I want to do is actually increase the size, okay, because it's way too small. And how much should it be? Well, this is something that we discovered through trial and error, so no, we need that, we need that to be a little bigger. 120. All right, here we go. This is good. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the styles now and some of the styles and other cool stuff. Now, here's something I want you to notice. The thing is that I can edit this. I can write something like Apple over here. Okay? That's another option. And this is actually a kind of problematic, in my opinion. Okay? Because if uh, you give, make this combo box and you're giving the user like three options and, like, and you're like, pick one of them. And then he types in something of his own, you know, something that, you know, something completely irrelevant. And then he clicks submit. So isn't that going to be bad? Well, maybe, maybe it is useful for the user to enter his own option, maybe. But personally, I would like to keep that disabled, okay, for most purposes anyway. So what I'm going to do is use the style called wx.cb underscore read only. And, of course, as you can guess, what this does... Oh, what the heck? Oh, right. 
uh, basically this prevents the user from editing anything okay so that's why it's like it's you know the way it is right now okay because it's not no longer in the editable text field okay so I can't actually edit those values anymore okay I can only select the values from the drop down list okay so let's keep it that way another uh, style that we have is wx dot cb underscore sort and as you can guess this basically sorts the values alphabetically okay um, well most of them were like b anyway so it's a bit hard to notice but yeah you can see that they're alphabetically ordered okay uh, even among the b's because you know you have bi then you have br then you have bu that's all following in alphabetical format okay so those are the styles there is some other stuff i believe like uh, cb underscore simple okay this only works on windows though from what i hear okay i don't know that that just looks weird what's, it, what's it even happening over there maybe it's because of the size or something i don't know i've never tried this one okay yeah it was because of the size so yeah cb underscore simple if you haven't already guessed what it does is basically allows the uh, drop down list to be displayed by default permanently okay so yeah pretty much uh, but uh, yeah i don't want that so i'm just gonna remove that okay and let's just bring back the read only style because that's the only one i actually want Okay, now we're going to take a look at some of the other stuff, okay, because I can't jump to styles without actually discussing how to actually interact with this check button, how to actually retrieve values from it, so let's go ahead and do that, okay? <sighs> okay, so get ready. What I'm going to do is create a button, okay? I'm going to use this button to interface with the check button, okay? Sorry, the combo box. I'm going to select something on the, on the combo box and I'll click on the button, okay, to basically trigger a function on it, okay? You'll see. So I'll just do this real quick. Okay, what's a what's a suitable label? Mm, submit. Okay, and position it somewhere uh, 150. Actually, no, 200 and 100. Okay, and yeah, I'll bind this function to the wx event underscore button. So now we need to go and bind this event, event dot underscore button, to an actual function, okay? So I'll write here self dot on submit, then go down here and define that function, okay, on submit. And this takes self as a parameter because it's part of the class and it'll take e as a parameter because it's an event, basically, okay? And down here is basically where I'm going to be calling a whole bunch of functions on the self.cb, which is our combo box, okay? Over here is basically our testing ground. We're going to try out a whole bunch of functions over here, okay? So let's try something really, really basic first, okay? Print dot, sorry, print self.cb dot get, no, what was it? Get count, right? This, okay? Now this, just watch let me run this now and show you what it does okay i'll just select something random that doesn't really matter i'll click submit and there you go it prints out four over there okay so what does get count do well if you haven't already guessed what it does is simply prints out the total number of items within the combo box okay pretty cool right so let's move on to some other more interesting ones okay so we also have get selection can you guess what this one does well this one returns the index value of the currently selected item now let's try that out okay by actually running it i'm going to select bread and click submit and and it prints out zero okay that's because indexing starts from zero okay i'll go ahead and select cheese now think about it, what should be the index number printed out? What's its position? 2, right? I'll click submit and there you go. We have 2 written over there. So it's all working correctly, okay? So yeah, but what if you don't want the index number? What if you want the string? What if you want the string of the currently selected value, right? You might want that. You might not want an integer value. So 
for that we have get string selection okay now this one's pretty cool now watch i'm going to select cheese and click submit and you see this prints out cheese okay or biscuits in fact you know select biscuits so that's pretty interesting okay uh, we can use get string selection and get the string instead of the index if that's what you want okay but there's another way of doing this without having to rely on get string selection i just want to show you this because I'm, i'll also show you another function in the process okay which is find string okay um now let's see i hope i remember this correctly actually uh what was it okay so if i remember correctly it's actually going to go something like this we need to use get string actually not find string find string is something a bit different what we need to do is that we have get selection over here which returns the index number so we should use self.cb.get string like this okay but get string does is that it takes an index number and it goes and finds the string at that index number okay so it's like your if you pass two into it it goes to the second index and it finds cheese okay so these two have basically the same effect as self dot uh, get string selection okay i just want to show you guys because this kind of stuff is important okay now let's just verify this by running it okay butter submit and there you go it prints out butter okay as expected now what else is there that we can take a look at well there's stuff like um well there's self.cb.set value okay you can use this to currently um how do i put this well you'll see let's just pick something like apple okay and i'll go here and click submit all right that's interesting i think because we have the read only style i cannot do this because what set value is supposed to do you'll see is change the currently selected uh you know change the text in the combo box okay that's what it does but i guess it's not available if you have the read only option you know enabled okay so that's something interesting to note i guess there are a bunch of other functions okay like find string this takes a string okay and then returns the index position uh, at where it's located it's like the reverse of get string okay so there are a whole bunch of stuff like this you can go check them out on, on my website okay uh, i think you guys will get i think this will get a little boring if i go through every single function so that's why I, you know you, you can you can just go check them out on my website if you want to learn more about them okay so yeah so that's about it for this video okay and i think we've covered the combo box widget pretty well so yeah and i hope you guys subscribe so we'll be introducing a lot more content and a lot more videos a lot more stuff not just on wx python but on other cool stuff in python as well okay so yeah subscribe and i'll see you guys in a later video